But this is one of the tools we'll be looking at in a few minutes, which it's really okay where you get the job done in under three minutes. <laughs> now, most of you folks will be thinking in under three minutes, you might have some complaints from the government. And in my house, there's the government. Okay, there's my four daughters and my wife. If I've got to you know, just use the bathroom, I've got to get approval from three people before I can even use the bathroom. It's tough. I've lost all my hair, I know. So what are we looking at here, folks? We're looking at a simple USB flash attack. This was the very attack that was responsible for one of the biggest break-ins to the US military, US military bases in the world. Could USB flash drives be your enterprise's weakest link? All right, so I heard um, Joe talking about Louis Vuitton, and I can't even pronounce some of those names. This looks like an average flash drive. I guarantee you if we put Louis Vuitton on this, the actual badge, we'll get a whole bunch of ladies opening up this drive and plugging it into the machine. They won't be able to get to their computer fast enough to plug it in. I've got a whole lot of ladies that I've got to run from as well because they're going to want to beat me. Sorry, ladies. I, you know, I'm a name brand two person. You see, there's the Google one. There's the Nike. CVS is a pharmacy, so it's not too cool. All right, so how are we going to do this? Oh, hang on. We've got this new cool little device, which is called Teen-C. Now, I got into computers many, many, many years ago in the good old Commodore 64 ZX Spectrum days. You all look very young to me, but I'm sure some of you might still remember the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum. All right, so hang on. We've got these cell phones that are two gigahertz processors, and not that long ago, I can still remember learning how to hack. It wasn't called hacking then. We were doing a lot of squeaking and squawking to try and bypass those demo games that you buy in the store, the bookstore because it was very expensive in England, so, you know, I couldn't afford 30 pounds. So, the point I'm trying to make is I got into computers accidentally because I always used to like taking my toys apart. And apparently, as my dad tells me, I always put them back together, but they didn't seem to always work the way they did in the beginning. So, with this type of device, we are able to make a USB device do whatever we want it to do. And we can now not just think about social engineering, because it becomes pretty tedious to try and say the same things over and over and over. We've done enough assessments where we've gone into police departments and we've actually had them open up the doors for us to get in. As long as you look like you had the badge and everything else, a lot of times, you you just be let in. Oh, hey, he's got a computer in his hand. He looks like he's doing something important. Let's open the door for him. But with this device, this allows us to customize with some basic code, GUI-based code, for us to be able to social engineer digitized, which is really the art of deception, which there still is no patch for user stupidity. Gone are the days, I'm not in Africa anymore, so we can't scare the people by leaving them in the bush with the lions and the elephants and everything else, right? Everybody always says to me, hey, you come from South Africa, so when you come out of the airport, are there like elephants and lions and that? I'm like, you won't believe it. That was a quick story of when uh, Tim and I were in Africa and we get out, you know, the airport and Tim's expecting to see these big lions. See, Tim's not sure either, so I can say a few good things about Tim, right? And this is really with the intention of making sure you understand security. You can never have a computer that is 100% safe and secure unless you pull the power out and there's no Ethernet connection. So what do we try and do in security is to always ensure we take in proactive initiatives. So yeah, Tim and I get outside Johannesburg International Airport. And I've got my little Nike backpack on because I've got my Nike shoes. I've been to Africa before, so I know the stuff, right? 
Tim's older than me and he's a little bit bigger, so I'm always, you know, the one that's got the big mouth and runs very quickly. So we get out and the first thing Tim looks and he's like, oh my goodness, there's a lion, man. I'm like, Tim, we better start running, dude. And we run in and we run in and all of a sudden I stop. So I'm like, dude, wait, what are you doing, man? There's a lion coming to get, he's going to get, just carry around. I'm like, I'm just putting on my Nike Ultra Super Duper Light shoes. It's like, dude, those shoes are not going to stop you from being chowed, bitten by that huge lion. And I turned around and said, well, they're going to certainly help me outrun you. So the point being that in security, we don't want to be the low hanging fruit. We don't want to leave our buddies out in the distance while we got our Nike shoes and we're running down and it's getting bitten by the lion, right? So security is not all about the high-end stuff that will definitely put you all to sleep. That's why I'm not talking about code. So what are we talking about? Educating people in social engineering. Now we're just going to put a little bit of digitization onto it, la. Okay, la? Everything good, la? Okay, cool. So here we've got this very simple tool. It's called the Social Engineer Toolkit. Set. <laughs>